You're listening to the Batuta Advocates Weekly News Wrap on Desert Rock FM 96.5. Welcome back to the Weekly Batuta News Bulletin where we dissect the week that was and talk about some of the biggest stories to come through the printing press of Batuta Advocate, Australia's oldest and most favourite newspaper based out here in Batuta. You're obviously hearing right now the words coming out of my mouth, I'm Clancy Overall. Uh, editor of the Batuta Advocate, I'm joined by Editor at Large, General Parker, and uh, Eternal Cadet slash Maintenance Guy and uh, Printer Fixer, Wendell Hussey. How are you, mate? I'm all right, mate. It's been a hell of a week dealing with um, the mess you created a couple of days ago with the koala and everything. But Well, as I said, I was glad it was a koala that I ran up another. Not a dog. dog. Not a yeah, dog, well, a family, a big family lab. That could have been worse. For those who aren't aware, I had to deal with the koala that... Clancy Kid and I got stopped by the police um, with a koala in a bag which I was taking to the bin to dispose of and it was a bit of an incident and Clancy just was on a call and disappeared and left it to me to sort out. Yeah, well, in the immortal words of uh, Tony Abbott, shit happens. Shit does happen, but we cleared it up. I just don't know why there was a koala on the road in Western Queensland. I thought we had those koala bridges anyway. Well, you know, it's 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 probably an escapee from the Royal Batuta Zoo. You know what you noise know, it makes? Obviously, that place has been shut for a while after, um, you, you know, what happened with Glenn McGrath all those years ago. How I know, thought it was just tranquilized. This thing. No, no. So, so if you aren't aware, uh, Glenn did come into the zoo a couple of years ago, and he shot a few of our great apes but he was told he was told that it was a safari i don't know who he was he doing paid it. money no, for well, that see, for conservation as well he, he 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 was doing it because he said that you know it was inhumane that this chimpanzee was caged like that so he w- was basically having to put them out of their misery at Me. least that's what he told Collins and Manchester's court shooting an ape is pretty close to shooting a person that's not big game an ape that's medium game it's human game. I don't know I'd say it's probably more crook to shoot a dolphin you've got a primate running on two legs away from you and you shoot it you'd know I mean, you've run over and killed a few dogs in your day and put it on the neighbour's lawn blame them they buried it thinking the dog had died yeah, from old well, age in the green bin uh, they go with all of your grass clippings apparently can you put can yeah. you put car- like carcasses in the green bin? Yeah, well, you can't. You certainly can't put them in the recycling bin. I mean, that would. <laughs> Why can't I mean, you just put them in the normal mate, bin? That That's is, what you do no, with chicken carcass. If, if, in if, the landfill. In the world of garbage collection, the absolute, like, the A1 job that you can have is to get the, the recycling bin. Um, so, yeah, putting a dead animal inside the recycling bin is probably going to put the fear of God in a few garbage collectors. Fringe NRL players. Um, fringe Q Cup players in Batuta. That's our recycling run. Now, happy Pride, everyone. Um, we're going to get on with the with the stories here. What, what's first up here? It was particularly uh, indulgent Indro today. Uh, we're going to start off down south in the state of New South Wales, where the town of Toronto has given up and officially changed its name to Toronto. Yes, the iconic and heavily gentrified town of Toronto, known as the heartland of Australian boaty culture and the birthplace of NRL icon Willie Mason, has announced some big news this week. The local council, in partnership with the region's many schools and sporting clubs, walked out of a long-awaited community meeting with a unanimous decision to officially stop pretending to have more than two syllables in their town's name. Yes, they're changing the signs as we speak. Nestled deep within the coastal enclaves of Lake Macquarie, this town was once one of the many wild coasty towns in the region with the North American themed names. Others include Brooklyn, Wyoming, Niagara Park, but not anymore because Canadians don't say Toronto. Only people from Toronto say Toronto. There it is. Some entertainment news now and we've got a headline that reads like this. Why don't more artists come to Australia? Ask Nation who bullies every single musician to drink from their shoe. Another week and another international artist doing a shoey. It now seems it is virtually impossible to attend a concert without hearing the audience chant the word shoey, which will be done until the artist either walks off or tells the crowd to fuck off or they do in fact take off their shoe and have a drink at it. Yes, a few big artists like Jack Harlow will tell the crowd to fuck off, but most of them submit in the end and make headlines back in their home countries for drinking something out of a shoe in front of bang fans. But 
as fun as it is, it's been revealed that some artists like Queen Bay, Beyonce that is, are now leaving Australia out of their tours in an effort to avoid this cringe cultural trend. Yeah, it's pretty grim, isn't it? Mm. And people say that we don't have a culture. Speaking of culture. And speaking of someone who isn't leaving Australia out of their tour, Pink has revealed she's coming down under and it's inspired the nation's netball mums to call their salon and book in a fresh galah. The galah being the uh, pink streaks through the hair. Pink and white. Yes, yeah. it's time to bust out the yellow tail. The P explanation mark uh, NK is coming back to Australia. The princess of Chardonnay Pop has revealed that she'll be coming back to Australia and bringing her summer carnival tour here in early 2024. And that means salons around the channel country and the nation are under the pump. Julie Moore Hart, the owner of boutique salon Sheer Elegance, Sheer spelt S-H-E-A-R, here in Batuta Heights says she's been doing a cut and colour special and has been flat chat around the clock. Julie told us that anyone can come in and do the Raise Your Glass special, which comes with a free glass of shardy, any cut, any colour. Very popular. Obviously, the Galah is the one that everyone's been going for. <laughs> well, the party is certainly starting up there, uh, so um, I might actually have to pop down and get myself a free haircut. <laughs> Go on. Get into it. Now, uh, we'll wrap up with some literary news. And Andy Griffiths Publishers are set to rename the first book in the Bum Trilogy to The Day My Bum Acted Out of Character. As news spreads of Roald Dahl's novels having offensive language removed to adapt to modern audiences, it appears that beloved Australian children's author Andy Griffiths has also copped the same treatment. If you don't spend that much time on Twitter or Sky News, the old English author Roald Dahl is having his books rewritten in the UK to change language, like Mrs. Twit being ugly and beastly. They've changed that to just beastly. It's caused a bit of a stir amongst people that don't want anything to change ever and that we should still have leaded paint in our houses and kids should still get the cane. Yeah, true, but uh, Rod Dahl, is, uh, he's, he's Welsh, he's, he's not English, so uh, not the same thing. we'll have to go hey, back uh, there. Hey, here's a good one for our, um, for our uh, United Kingdom audiences. Same thing. I suppose you could say the same thing about, you know... South Australians and, and Victorians are largely the same, aren't they? Yes, they are. Anyway, it has caused a stir, and it's caused one of our famous authors to change one of his most famous books. The Day My Bum Went Psycho will become The Day My Anus Acted Out of Character, with Griffiths saying he didn't want to further stigmatise vulnerable people by normalising these microaggressions. I think it's fair enough. It's a nice touch. It's a nice touch. Modern my- book for modern kids. I mean, it's better than the initial plan was The Day My Asshole. Um, started playing up. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's not really appropriate for kids, I don't think. So I think this is a no. much nicer name. No, the it, day my asshole got cranky. Let's uh, leave it on that note, I reckon. <laughs> Goodbye. See you guys. Thank you.